conscious are you when you contribute? My husband Mike and I just returned from a hike in the Varanga Mountains in eastern Rwanda. We spent time with a family of gorillas. As soon as we descended the mountain, a young boy approached us with a picture he drew of a mama gorilla with a baby on its back. Ha! He knew what we would see, I'll never know. He proceeded to try to sell his one-of-a-kind creation. We proceeded to follow our guide back to the vehicle. This young boy ran alongside our car barefoot while navigating the potholes for what felt like two kilometers. He was waving his one-of-a-kind creation in the window. Mama, Mama, please, I'm hungry. His eyes pleading and my heart breaking. I learned quite a bit about when and when not to contribute while traveling through Africa, which is why I hesitated. Then I turned to my husband. He's being entrepreneurial. I like that. He's persistent, a good characteristic in a young man. It is one of a kind. A voice came from the front seat of the car. Our Rwandan guy said, Mama, if you're thinking about buying that picture, please don't. I said, okay, I won't, but please tell me why. He said, if you buy that picture, that young boy will be here tomorrow, the next day, and the next. And every day he is here is every day he is out of school. And every day he's out of school is every day he limits the opportunities for his future and our communities. When you contribute, are you hurting or helping? giving a hand out or a hand up, perpetuating dependency or creating opportunity. The saying is better to give than receive. What does that saying really mean to you? That saying is rooted in me feels better when me gives. Where's the you when it's all about me? Contributing to you just because me feels good only satisfies my ego or reduces my guilt. I encourage you to consciously contribute, which means me needs to ask myself will my contributions cultivate the behavior I intend. You in you, me, we refers to understanding the needs of an individual or group you would like to contribute to or being conscious of the bigger implications of fulfilling their desires. Consciously select contributions that will provide the intended impact. When you contribute in a specific situation, ask yourself, are you promoting dependency or opportunity? A missionary once said to me, we take so much time thinking about how to make money and so little time thinking about how to give it away. She's not suggesting not to contribute. She is suggesting how to make it count. How to make your contributions count locally or internationally requires some consideration. What fundamental skills do you need to consciously to contribute to create a positive ripple effect? Well, ask questions. Specifically ask what an individual or group needs and really listen to what they want. You know to do this in business. Whether you do it or not, you know to do it. When it comes to contributing, we often assume the need or trust an organization has done their due diligence. We assume if someone is begging, they'll eat anything. We assume when Red Cross or the Canadian Council for Refugees ask for help, they're asking for our clothes. Nope, they want dollars. We assume if someone doesn't have a Christmas dinner, that they would want it to be delivered by a complete stranger rather than make the parent the hero. We assume that everyone would want what we would want in the same situation. When we contribute, it's not about me, it is about you. Assumptions are not conscious contributions. Assumptions are barriers to making your contribution count. This is Susanna Stevens, Conscious Contribution Cultivator of the You, Me, and We group. Until next, we Wednesday, make your contributions.